weeks of this podcast, I am going to be reading to you from my upcoming novella, Void, which is going to be released on October 1st in both EP or electronic book and print formats. So, um, listen closely as I read to you chapter 3 of my novella today. And uh, be sure to tune in uh, on, uh, to my social media feeds for the next couple weeks. Not only are we going to be having a launch party and live shows uh, online on the day of the release, but I'm going to be setting up some giveaways for both electronic and print versions of the book. So, if you like what you hear today, and you want to have it in physical format, or you'd like to have it for your Amazon Kindle or e-reader uh, make sure you listen and follow me on all my social media feeds, which can be found in the descriptions of both the podcast and this video on YouTube. Also, uh, I want to thank our sponsors of the podcast before we get started. Sponsors such as Audible.com, uh, B&H Photo Video, Boho Appeal by Ally, um, AutoCrit, which has been a big su- uh, supporter of this uh, podcast and channel, and um, is one of the best writing softwares I've uh, ever used um, to help edit and format my books the way that they should be. So, um, AutoCrit. Um, the Book Depository is another great uh, sponsor of this site, of this uh, podcast. Um, we have a lot of great sponsors, guys, and I feel very uh, privileged to work with them. Uh, BarkBox is also a sponsor of ours, so if you'd like discounts, uh, memberships, or savings on any of our sponsors, the links are interspersed um, down below in the description box of the video and also the podcast, along with our social media profiles. Click the links, follow the instructions, and make sure you tune in as we'll be announcing more stuff from our sponsors in the weeks to come. Now, here is Chapter 3. A void. A half hour later, Javier was dressed and sitting on the couch in his living room, surrounded by his friends. While Jasper and Julian had helped him get dressed, Pamela, Brienne, and Michelle had cleaned up the mess in his home, straining it up to be presentable and livable again. They were all sitting with them now the guys drinking the few bottles of beer left in Javier's fridge, and the girls comforting him. I hate for you guys to see me like this, Javier whispered, looking down as he felt his face flush again. Javi, you've seen us all at our worst, and not once did you judge us. We're your best friends, and nothing could ever change that, Pamela whispered. You can't always be the strongest among us, dude, Jasper said, taking a swig of his beer and resting a hand on his shoulder. That's right. No matter what, we have your back. Sometimes you need to alleviate some of that burden of yours onto us. Shit, we do it with you all the time, Julian said. All I can think about is how embarrassed Elaine would have been to see me like this. Jesus, I haven't written a single article in two months. I'm living living off my savings right now. I'm supposed to turn in a manuscript to a publishing house in a month for a possible book deal, but I've got nothing. Worst of all, I've let myself go completely. Javi, you know what else Elaine would have been doing? Should we be telling you that this needs to stop, Brianne said grabbing one of his hands. We know how hard this is for you, Michelle began to say. Javi, we know how much you love Elaine, and we loved her too. You guys were great together. It's been over a year and a half now, and she would want you to find a way to move on. She had such a zest for life, and she would not want to watch you sink deeper into depression. You need to get back out into the the world and start living again. Pamela finished. I want to, guys. I really do. It's just hard to imagine moving on without her. I mean, I was going to propose to her that night, Javier said, putting his face into his hands. Javi, 
You never told us that, Pamela said, putting one hand on his back. Yeah, I was at the restaurant where we were supposed to meet, and I planned on proposing to her. I had it all set up. It would have been great. I had this whole future set up, and then that asshole drunk driver took her from me. She's gone, and so was the future I had planned for our lives. She was my hope, guys. Listen, Hobby. Sometimes life throws some pretty horrific curveballs our way, Julian began to say. That's right, and sometimes we get knocked down pretty hard. We all had a picture of our lives when we were younger, and they have changed drastically as we got older. Julian Ch or Chasper chipped in. You don't ever have to stop loving Elaine, Javi. She was your first sweetheart, and no one can ever replace that. You are a young guy, though, and she would not want you wasting the rest of your life being miserable. She'll always be a part of your life, and she'll remain alive in your mind, heart, and soul. You have to move on, Javi. If not for us, or for yourself, then for Elaine, Pamela said. Javi looked up, fighting back tears, and nodded his head. He looked down, and his brow touched Pamela's forehead. She held him, comforting him and giving him the peace and solace he needed. Listen, buddy, why don't we all go out tomorrow night? We'll have a nice dinner, then we'll go dancing. We'll hit up that club downtown that plays the old swing music you like so much. That'll be fun, Jasper said. Javier sat amongst his friends, seeming to contemplate the choices laid out before him. A part of him still felt that weight on his chest, pushing him down under the waves of depression. Yet he sensed that he was on the brink of change, and he needed to seize the opportunity while he could. Sure, that sounds like fun, actually. It'll give me an excuse to get cleaned up and dressed up for the first time in a year. I'm in if you guys are, Javier said, smiling a weak yet assuring smile. We're in, Pamela said, not bothering to ask anyone if they were free. Javier was finally opening up, and soon she would help him get back to the living life he was meant to live. And that does it for Chapter 3, guys. Thank you guys for listening to this week's episode of the podcast. I hope you enjoyed this reading. Uh, be sure in the comments below of this video or in the reviews of this podcast on both iTunes and SoundCloud. Leave your thoughts on both the book and uh, the podcast in general. What would you like to hear in the next episode of the podcast? Um, are there other books that you'd like to hear me do readings of? Um, and the question of the day if you could have anyone in the world do a reading of this book, who would it be and why? Is it a certain person whose voice you find intriguing or someone you think embodies the story being told? Leave your thoughts down below in the description. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen or yeah, listen to this podcast. Um, this is a pretty uh, open, uh, no bar hold uh, podcast where it's, you know, what you see is what you get. And uh, I think that um, it, the views on both the video and on the podcast itself have been reflecting how open you guys are and, uh, you know, accepting of this podcast. And it means a lot to me. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm really excited for the release of this novella. And I can't wait to share more with you guys. So make sure you follow me on all my social media feeds. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see my daily vlogs where I'll be talking about this book all the time. And uh, tune in for the latest developments. Until next time, guys. This is Anthony Avina of the Writer's Corner, signing off. Long days and pleasant nights, my friends.